Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today it is absolutely rubbish weather here and it's blowing a total gale so I thought we'd do something indoors and I've got something very interesting to show you. We're very lucky here to have a huge range of birds of prey that live wild around us and one in particular is the barn owls. We're really lucky that during the evenings we can sit here on the sofa and when we look out of the window in front of me here we actually get to see the barn owls hunting. They live in one of the barns here and actually have been raising their own clutch of chicks this year which is really lovely and we've been able to see those chicks fledge once they were ready. Now it's really hard to get close to wild birds of prey because they are so secretive and they're very very shy of human contact because at the end of the day we really present a danger um, or a threat to them rather than something of safety so they don't really want to be around us. But there are other ways in which we can learn a bit more about the birds and there's something that anybody can do, you've just got to find one particular thing. When I was walking down the lane a few days ago, sat on top of a fence post, I found something very special. Now some people might find these a bit gross, but they really aren't, they're actually really fascinating. What this is, is a pellet. Now lots of different birds make pellets. When an owl hunts its food, it tends to swallow the food whole in one big gulp, which can be quite amazing to watch, especially when it's something like a barn owl, because they seemingly have very small beaks. However, they have quite a wide gape, and it's that big open gape that has allows them to do this. Now when they swallow that food, as well as all the parts of the animal that they want to digest, they've also got bits of fur and bone which are really too hard for them to digest. However, that food's already in their gizzard. So they need to find a way to bring it up and they bring that back up as a pellet. So the pellet basically just contains all the excess stuff that they can't take any nutrition out of or is just too big for them to digest. So what this leaves us with is a little parcel basically giving us loads of clues as to what that bird's eaten. So what I'm going to show you today is how you can dissect a pellet and how you can look at all the different little things inside it. Because as it stands this looks pretty boring and we can't really see what's going on. So on this tray here, I've got three pellets that I picked up and I found these just on a fence post, so basically on the flat top of the fence post, about 100 yards from where we know they nest. Now, one important thing before you go out looking for pellets in the wild, you need to remember about any laws in your country around the protection of birds of prey, especially with disturbance. So here in the UK there are laws around not disturbing birds of prey in their nesting habitat, so you need to be careful about where you go looking. But within the surrounding area of where owls will nest, especially if you hear them in a certain area regularly, if you look on the ground or on different high perching points, so usually places like fences, you are likely to find pellets like these. Now you don't need a lot in order to dissect a pellet, you're going to need some water and that's really just to soften this pellet down. We could dissect it dry but what we'll struggle to do is to get out all the tiny little bones and I think you'll be amazed at just how small some of these bones are. So you'll need some water and you want a dish really to be able to pull these pellets apart and I find sometimes that a little simple pair of tweezers helps as well because some of these bones are so so fiddly. Now I've got two pellets which are quite hard to see into, um, they're pretty sturdy and the interesting thing about barn owl pellets is they always come out this dark colour. If they're fresh they will be almost black 
and then as they're a little bit older and drier they turn into this sort of grey colour and they're always the size of about a, a man's thumb so a little bit bigger than mine um, I also found this other palette which is quite cool because you can actually see pretty much the entire parts of the mouse already so whether some of this pellets come away as the owls spat it out i don't know but we can see the little rib cage and the, even the tail and the head so it'll be quite fun i think to dissect this one so the first thing we're going to do is put the pellets into the water and that just allows them to soak off So you can see already it's going darker as all this material is starting to soften. Funnily enough, this actually has a barn owl feather attached to the pellet. And it's quite common that um, birds will ingest their own feathers because when they preen, they often end up with them in their mouths. This is the pellet that has obviously come apart as the owl was regurgitating it, but we can actually see pretty much the whole part of the mouse all in one, including all its fur. Here's its ribs and its spine and even its little tail there, which is quite amazing. I'll leave this to one side for the moment. And it's quite a weird feeling because it's largely quite soft, however, when you take away all the fur, you've actually got little bits of bone also starting to appear. So if it's still quite dry, like you can see this is still quite dry in the middle, you can always just pop it back in the water just to give it a bit more sort of softening effect. Because all this material that's holding the pellet together and sort of making the pellet what it is, is really all the fur from those small mammals and mice that the owl is eating. And you can see how well compacted this is. So there is literally all these little bones. I've got a bit of a, a jaw here and a tooth. Tiny, tiny little jaw with my camera will focus. That's a seriously small mammal there. You can see here, we've got that whole upper part sure. of the skull. You can see just how small that is, those tiny, tiny little teeth. So I've now separated each pellet onto some kitchen roll just to soak off the water so that we can actually see what's going on. Now one of the easiest ways to see just what the bird's been eating is by counting the number of skull pieces that you find. And both of these pellets really just contain the tiniest of shrews. If I put my finger next to these, you can appreciate just how small these bone fragments are. 
And this gives us a really great indication of the diet and the type of thing that these owls are eating. Now, these ones seem to almost exclusively in these pellets be eating shrews. And there's lots of different types of shrews and voles. Um, and you can tell by having a look at the lower jaw and by looking at the particular pattern in the teeth. Now, hopefully I can get this to focus. So you can see the tiny little teeth running along there. And by looking at the different shape of the jaw, of the front teeth here and the rear teeth here, it will be able to help you identify what type of rodent you're looking at. So in this pellet, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different little shrews and voles that this bird has managed to ingest. These parts here are the lower half of the jaw. So if I hold this one up a bit closer, you'll be able to see all these tiny, tiny little teeth that run along the edge of this little jaw piece and then the larger front teeth. And these shapes are all different depending on the type of rodent that you're looking at. Again, in this pellet, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different little skulls. I also pulled out some of the smaller bones as well, just to help you appreciate how tiny these animals are that this owl is eating. I think they are in their own way quite beautiful and it's amazing to just see how small these are. One of the most beautiful bits that I found in this pellet, um, which is really quite amazing how delicate these are, is a tiny, tiny little hip bone there. I think that is just amazing. You know, these things are so fiddly and tiny. Now, most of the smaller bones in the animal have been digested and then all the different minerals like the calcium will have been taken out to benefit that bird of prey. Um, but the larger bones aren't quite as edible along with all that fur. And so we get to see all these wonderful little different pieces. So finally, I'm just going to soak this very interesting little pellet where we can actually see all the different parts of the rodent. Um, I think this is a mouse in here. So I'm going to soak this apart and we'll see just how it comes apart. So I've soaked this apart and what's quite interesting is we've actually got two different rodents here. I guess this one didn't quite agree with him because it's pretty much still intact to the point where you can actually still see some whiskers, which is absolutely incredible. So I appreciate this is a bit gory and you may not want to look, but we can actually see here the whole spine and the ribs all the way down to its back leg and the tail and still part of the head there. So this just gives us such an amazing indication of what these birds are eating. Um, and what's quite fascinating is it, it helps us to understand what other species are around here. And they're obviously doing quite well at the minute. The rodent population is obviously pretty good. Um, and it means that these barn owls are getting a really good diet of one of the most natural foods that they like to eat and they're getting plenty of it which is just amazing so i'll show you these in a bit more detail
So I really hope you enjoyed that. If you want to try dissecting a pellet yourself, I will link to some organisations, including the Barn Owl Trust, who actually sell pellet dissection kits and show you with some free PDFs how to dissect a pellet for yourself, how to look at all the different bones and to understand what it is you're looking at. So I hope you enjoyed that. I appreciate it might have been a bit gory for some of you, but I do hope you found it interesting. It just gives us that amazing insight into what it is that the wild owls like to eat and it brings us that little bit closer to understanding a little bit more about their habitat and their life. As always thank you for watching and I will see you all very soon.